my writing was um 7.5 and my wow. speaking was 7.5 wow so you jumped from six to seven point five in the writing yes fantastic huh? yes. did you go back yeah. down to your local academy and show them <laughs> <laughs> we are here to guide you through this test jungle enjoy these ielts tutorials and if you need more help or want to access the famous online course you can visit us at ieltspodcast.com hi ielts students my name is daphne I'm going to start this podcast by asking you a question. So are you happy and fulfilled in your current career? Are you looking for a dream job? What are your career goals and ambitions? Have you had to look for a new job recently? Maybe you finish your studies and you're looking for an internship or apprenticeship. Lots of questions for you to think about, lots of answers. I hope you're all shouting at me or thinking about at the moment. The whole world has been turned upside down recently with so many of us working remotely, working offline, working from home. We abbreviate this, interestingly enough, to WFH, working from home. The most important thing is, could you discuss all these challenges and questions and situations in English? How would you cope discussing this in your IELTS speaking exam? You've guessed it. Today we're going to be talking about vocabulary and specifically this podcast is going to guide you through some very specific, precise, concise, interesting vocab to talk about your work and career. We're going to go through some sample practice exam questions. So the speaking exam, remember, is in three sections. Part one, which is kind of quite general to relax you, get you used to the situation, hopefully calm your nerves. Part two is sometimes called the long turn. This is when you have a cue card and you have one minute to prepare and then two minutes to make a kind of presentation to the examiner. And the third part builds on some of the information and the theme of the part two, asking you some more general, uh, more difficult questions uh, about that particular topic. So we're going to look at some vocab, we're going to go through a sample speaking exam and help you answer those questions that I asked at the beginning. So my name's Daphne, I work with Ben and the other tutors here at IELTSpodcast.com. I'm really glad to be doing this podcast today because I think talking about work and career is incredibly important and it's something that is very current. We're always asked, what are you doing? What are your ambitions? What job are you in? It's a very common question, not only when you meet people for the first time, but also in a professional context. So let me give you a bit of background about me and my career since we're talking about it. I graduated in doing a degree in languages and politics. So I decided to do politics as well as languages because I didn't want to be uh, just specializing too much in just languages. So I was really glad to do politics as well. I then worked for a large multinational finance company. So I'm going to be using a lot of vocab here. Make a note of some of this vocab. Even better, pause and get a pen and you'll hear me when I'm giving you really good vocab, I'll stress it. So I was in finance for a large multinational company to so write those words down. When you write things down, by the way, it's a really, really good way to remember it. There is a connection between your brain and writing in pencil or pen, which is not the same as writing on a computer always encourage you when you're learning vocab to have a notebook to write down these words and I'm going to share some really useful practical tips with you later on the best way to learn vocab so that you remember it. So I worked in a large multinational finance company and then I moved from there to a smaller boutique outfit. I was headhunted so headhunted means that somebody asked me or someone approached me and asked me if I'd like to work for the smaller company because I had the languages. This is another benefit. We've talked before about the benefits of learning languages. So because I spoke French and German, I was headhunted to a smaller boutique outfit. 
Outfit is another word for a company, usually a smaller company. Later on, I moved into education. So I've worked in private language schools, in more commercial companies. So that's some of the, again, the larger multinational language schools. And now I work as a tutor here and also in a secondary school. So my teaching context at the moment is in secondary. So there's lots of different words you've got there already, and that's just even finding out about my career. So this podcast today, we're going to look at the speaking, part one, part two, part three. And then I'm also going to, as we go through, share some vocab with you. So that's going to be really helpful for you to have a look at this vocab and to think how you would use this vocab in context. So speaking part one style questions. Remember, this is to relax you. It's not meant to be too challenging. But that being said, every chance you have to speak is an opportunity to show the examiner the level of your vocab. So we're going for very high marks on lexical range and accuracy. And we're also immediately going to start showing grammatical range and accuracy. So I'm going to show a range of tenses in my answer. Uh, The examiner can then see how confident I am in my grammar. So I'll speak in part one questions. Examiner, do you have a job right now? Not at the moment. In fact, I'm currently studying for my master's in psychology, which I'm finding really interesting, but also challenging. I've always been fascinated by psychology, so I decided to learn more about this important field. So immediately you've got great tenses there. I am currently studying. I'm finding interesting, present continuous, and I've always been fascinated by present perfect. So I decided, past simple, to learn about this important field. So I know this podcast is about vocabulary, but already you can see how the grammar is really important here. So vocabulary that little bit, you can talk about the field, a field of career. Will you plan to use this learning in your future career? Well, I hope it will be useful for me, but as a future career, what I'm really motivated about is to work in environmental studies, which is particularly relevant and topical in the current climate crisis. I'll be looking for an internship in the USA or even an apprenticeship, which might be more practical and hands-on. So nice vocab in there. We've got the adjectives to describe a job, relevant and topical. An internship and apprenticeship. And in a minute, I'll just explain the difference between those two things. What qualifications would you need for this job? I'm not exactly sure. While my degree in psychology is interesting, I'm not convinced that it will be as useful as studies in biology or even geography might be. However, I've managed to gain informative and valuable work experience in a range of innovative small companies who are at the cutting edge of this field, so I hope that will be useful. Let's look at that vocab again and then we'll go into some definitions. So, I've managed to gain informative and valuable work experience. Informative and valuable. It is valuable to use adjectives in your writing and in your speaking. This really adds a huge amount of value for me. So you can see it's a useful word uh, in a range of innovative small companies. Innovative, so companies who are doing interesting new things, who are at the cutting edge of this field. So I hope it will be useful. Let's pause a minute from that speaking part one and just look at vocab. So This is the first section of vocab that I want to give you now. So make sure you absolutely have that pen and paper ready. So a field of work is an area or a kind of career. So I am in the field of education. The speaker in that section wanted to get into the field of environmental studies. You can be motivated about something. You can be also motivated to do something with a verb. So if you're motivated about it, obviously you want to succeed. Equally, you may say you lack motivation in your current job, and that is why you are seeking another job. 
The difference between an internship and apprenticeship. So an internship, you're working usually for a short time, a couple of months, maybe six months at the most, often unpaid. Uh, and this is often office related. So because unemployment is very high in many countries, internships have become very popular where people have the opportunity to get some work experience and learn about a particular field. But the problem is often they're not paid. An apprenticeship is similar, but apprenticeship is more hands on. So you'd be doing more practical work in order to learn a job or a trade. So it's more skills related. So an internship is usually more office based and apprenticeship is usually more skills or practical skills related, I should say. An apprenticeship is usually more hands on. So you're getting involved in probably something physical, uh, for example, uh, mechanics or in a car garage or maybe something outside. We think of them as slightly different contexts. For any job, you need skills. You need communication skills, uh, which could be management skills or listening skills, or we talk about often now soft skills. Soft skills include critical thinking, problem solving, public speaking, if you have to make a presentation, which is terrifying, uh, professional writing, teamwork, digital literacy. This all might also be a technical skill leadership, professional attitude, and of course, work ethic. We talk a lot about having a good work ethic, being hardworking. So rewind, go back over that vocab again. And here's my first tip on how to really learn vocab. This is very important. Write it down. But don't just write it down and shut the notebook and leave it there. That's not going to help you. Write it down and use it. The first way to use it is with colleagues at work. And because this whole podcast is about work and all things career, that's quite easy. So you can start asking a friend or a colleague at work some of these questions. Ask them, what are they motivated about? Ask them if they've ever done an internship. Ask them if they think they have great soft skills. And this gives you a chance to practice saying the words and also obviously practicing listening to their answers. So let's get back to the exam questions and look at the speaking part two. The cue card here says, describe a job that would be classified as crucial or highly important. You should say what the job is, what the job involves, why it is important. So describe a job that would be classified as crucial or highly important. You should say what the job is, what the job involves, and why it is important. Okay, you have a minute to think about that. If you want to make this really useful, take a minute, write down uh, some words you would use, you would want to use in this cue card, and then you can practice your presentation. Uh, why I'm hesitating is just thinking as an aside, the best thing for you to write down. Now, I would recommend you write down at least 10 really important, fantastic, high level vocabulary words that you want to include in that speaking. So during that minute, follow the shape of the question, what this job is, this highly crucial or important job, what it involves, and why it's important. And next to each of those sections, those little questions, write down some high level vocab that you think you could incorporate. This is the answer I've got here. There's no doubt in my mind that workers who dedicate themselves to the health profession should be considered highly important or key workers. Not just in this co recent COVID pandemic, but in all situations, day or night, local or global, we depend on nurses, doctors, consultants, medical professions, professionals to diagnose, care for and cure us. It is definitely not a career for the faint hearted. And if you're after job flexibility or a dependable nine to five, it's not the one for you. 
as an example, a friend of mine who's always been determined to be a doctor is currently practicing at a London hospital and specializes in child medicine or pediatrics. He's involved in the A&E department, so has to react swiftly and calmly in all kinds of worrying situations, but always appear optimistic, though sadly, he's often had to break bad news to families. Of course, a career in medicine is one of the most important there is, as we're totally dependent on being able to get help when we need it. Everything from routine checkups to specialist consultancies, operations and follow-up care. There's always been a huge appreciation and acknowledgement for our doctors and nurses and this continues to grow. While in many countries medics are well paid, in others the job is not lucrative, although there's no doubt the gratitude the public feel towards medics is overwhelming. So rewind and listen again to that answer if you would like to. So that I think was a very useful full answer with a lot of vocabulary in there, some really clear uh, use of technical vocabulary. Also, use, you might have noticed as well, of good medical vocabulary to talk about that particular career sector. So you had a lexical field, we call it. So the wide range of words, for example, listing professions, so doctors, nurses, consultants, listing some of the things they do, diagnose, care for, cure, describing the job, it's not a career for the faint-hearted, but job flexibility is important, and a nine to five might be important. You might not want to do shift work, which obviously medics do have to do. So there's some good vocab in there on medical, medical profession, and also talking about different jobs as well. Later on in that final section, uh, while in many countries medics are well paid, in others the job is not lucrative. Lucrative? I would like to work in a lucrative field. A lucrative field or a lucrative area is where there is lots of money to be made. We usually think of this in as in finance, but not sadly in teaching. Although there's no doubt the gratitude the public feel towards medics is overwhelming. Overwhelming, hugely supportive. There's a lot of it. That answer very clearly answers the question, goes through each of the sections, is incorporating high-level technical vocabulary about medics and medicine, also incorporating some vocabulary to talk about work. So let's look at some ways of how to learn vocabulary. So I said the first thing you should do is write it down. Get a notebook, get a pen, write it down. But even better than that, write the word in context. You may want to write the word in a sentence. And I think this is really beneficial to see how the word works as a noun. Sometimes see how the word works as a verb. You might be able to transform it. Is there an adjective form that you could also write down? It's a very easy way to build your vocabulary, thinking about transforming words. So you look at the verb. Is there a noun? Is there a corresponding adjective? Write a sentence with that word in it. So we've had some good sentences here. Earning a lucrative income. So you can write a little sentence or a fragment of a sentence. The best thing to do next, if you're really building towards the band seven, which is very challenging, as you know, and very much needs super high level vocabulary, which is hard to learn. Do a mind map, find some synonyms. Think of the word work, for example. Immediately, lots of other words spring to mind. Career, job, employment. There's lots of other words that you could be using for so many of these. So think of synonyms, write them down. On the subject of synonyms, as a bonus for you, if you sign up to the newsletter, which gives you all the latest offers from us at IELTS Podcast, including all the essay correction special offers we have, the feedback we can give you on your essay writing, feedback we can give you on speaking, all the courses we offer. If you sign up for the newsletter, we can give you 
a whole PDF of great synonyms connected to IELTS reading, writing, and listening. This is a very valuable resource collected for us by one of our students who scored band eight in writing and was absolutely determined that by having a good vocabulary, that would be his success story. So have a look at that, sign up for the newsletter and the synonyms in there will really help you. So in your notebook, you're writing the word, but you're writing the synonyms as well. Second thing, what are you going to do? Use it. We talked about that already. Use it in speaking. Talk to your friends and colleagues, ask them about their work plans and work experiences. Third thing is a follow up to that. Use these words in your writing. There is a strong correlation between the speaking part three, which we're going to look at in a minute, and the writing task two. These high level questions, which you have to discuss, agree with or disagree with, are very similar, some of them. So all the vocabulary you work on in your speaking is also relevant to your writing. So include these words in your writing, get some feedback, we'll tell you if you're using them correctly, or if actually that's not quite the right word, we'll suggest another word for you. This is a really, really good way to improve by getting this personalized feedback on your writing so you can do the best you can. So use the words in writing, in emails to friends, emails at work, write an email writing for information for something, and of course, write us lots of essays, and that's great practice for you. As a bonus, just on learning vocabulary, think about active reading and active listening. So it's very easy for people to say, oh, read lots or listen to the radio or something. But think about active reading and active listening. This is a little bit different. This is when you are really engaged with what you are doing. You're really thinking about the words that are being used. You're really thinking about the context in which those words are used. If you hear something fantastically good, write it down, use it yourself. It's absolutely okay to copy. That's the best way for us to learn always. And if you're reading something and you think that's a new word, then look it up, write it down and use it. That is a very good way to expand your vocabulary. Okay, back to these exam questions. Art speaking part three. So as we said, this follows on from the part two. So the part two was all about job, jobs, which job would be classified as crucial or highly important. Speaking part three, examiner. Which jobs would you say are most respected in your country? Similar to many countries, the well-established fields of law, education and medicine may be the most highly acclaimed ones. It's usually thought that people specializing in these fields can easily learn earn a lucrative income compared to others. Although there's no doubt that many years of study are required, which can be both expensive and highly challenging. So the rewards are merited. So similar to many countries, the well-established fields of law, education and medicine may be the most highly acclaimed ones. So highly acclaimed is another word for most respected. It's usually thought that people specializing in these fields, we could also say sectors, can easily earn a lucrative income. Lucrative, remember, a high level, a large amount of money compared to others. Although there's no doubt that many years of study are required, which can be both expensive and highly challenging. So the rewards are highly merited. Another word for merited could be deserved. Next question. Some people say it's better to work for yourself than be employed by a company. What's your opinion? Working as an employee can offer many benefits, such as a reliable salary, the possibility of moving up the career ladder for promotion, as well as being a member of a pension scheme. It's often acknowledged that being a full-time employee can be demanding and very stressful. However, being self-employed while being appealing does not offer much job security, pensions or holiday rights. So there's some technical words in there, which is quite interesting. Maybe you are trying, applying for a new job at the moment and you need to negotiate your salary with the HR department, the human resources department. You might be asking for a reliable salary. You might be asking about the possibility of moving up the career ladder for a promotion. 
You might be asking whether there's a pension scheme or even a health scheme. So a full-time job, we said here, is demanding and stressful. The alternative could be being self-employed, which is more flexible. Here, the student says it's more appealing, but does not offer so much in the way of job security, pensions or holiday rights. So those are some of the negotiations you might be doing, some of the things you might want to investigate if you're looking for a new job. What changes in employment have there been in recent years in your country? As far as I know, more and more people, especially the younger generations, are involved in setting up their own businesses, as this is seen as offering more independence, more flexibility, and the chance to be creative, as well as earn substantial sums. So the startup community is now more alive than ever, especially tech startups, which are diverse and very exciting, with a lot of potential to grow exponentially. Great answer that to a very interesting question. What changes in employment have there been? So we talk a lot um, in the UK now about a side job. You may have your actual job that you're paid for, but you may also have a side job. And a lot of people have a side job in something technical. We've all been working on our computers a lot. So the possibility of doing work on your computer, of setting up a company, of setting up an app, of earning money is absolutely huge. We talk about this as a side job. So this particular answer talks about the younger generations involved in setting up their own businesses. This is seen as offering more independence, more flexibility, and the chance to be creative, great adjectives there again, and to earn substantial sums. The startup community, startup refers to new businesses, is more alive than ever, especially tech startups, which are diverse and very exciting with the potential to grow exponentially. Lots of great vocab in there. Let's just get into that a little bit more to finish with that second section of vocab. So innovative small companies, the student talks about. Innovative, so new creative ideas. New ideas is the most important thing. Innovation and the verb to innovate. Cutting edge is the best new technology, something that's modern, that's groundbreaking. Lucrative, we've talked about that before, so profitable, or giving you a high amount of money. Highly merited, we said was well-deserved. Moving up the career ladder. I love this image of each promotion you get, each step you take in the company moves you up the ladder. Many companies now have a less hierarchical structure. In the olden days, I think some of the more traditional companies maybe have a very hierarchical structure. You're moving up that ladder towards the management level. Now a lot of companies are less structured like that, but we do have this image of the career ladder. A pension scheme and job security are some of the benefits you might be looking for when you are finding out what your next job is going to be or investigating job opportunities. So I hope you find this really useful. We've covered a lot here. We've talked about different careers. We've talked about dream jobs. We've talked about how you could discuss your goals and your ambitions. We've looked at a whole IELTS speaking test and the sort of answers that you might be giving. I really hope that's helped you, give you some confidence in how you could talk about your work or career in your IELTS exam, if you had questions related to this sort of sector. Equally, if you're IELTS writing, very useful, as I say again, very useful to be able to incorporate some of that great vocab into your IELTS writing. So if you want some help, some feedback on your work, get in touch with us, sign up for the newsletter, send us an essay for correction. We'll give you feedback. This will really help you improve. So I'm Daphne. Thank you for listening to this from our podcast. IELTSpodcast.com.